Hello everyone, welcome back to my Beginner's Guide to Enigma's Cold War server series, where today we're going to be looking at strike missions. And as with all of these videos, I've broken up into different sections, so you'll find the time cards down below. First off, we'll look at what I mean by strike missions, then we'll look at what airframes are best suited for this, and then finally how to actually carry these out with some general tips for getting to the target and hopefully surviving at the end. So let's jump in. Okay, so first off, what do I mean by strike missions and how does it help your team win the campaign? So generally by strike missions, what I mean is attacks on predetermined locations that have been previously scouted for you. Most often here I'm talking about targeting the strategic targets, that is depots, industrial targets, and infrastructure. But equally a lot of the tips here will equally apply to attacking ground frontline units that have already been tagged for your team. Main difference between this and CAS is you know exactly where you're flying to, but with a major disadvantage that very often these targets are well behind the enemy front lines and are very often well defended. So you've got the bright side that you know there's a target where you're heading towards, the downside is it's a lot harder to get there and get back alive. As for how this helps, the strategic targets are kind of broken into two classes. The first is depots, these are shown with a little house symbol on the map once they are scouted. These will be a series of barracks in a block shape, and destroying these will destroy the amount of advantage on the front line that your team needs to be able to successfully push. So destroying these frontline depots makes it easier to push through when you do have a slight advantage. The other two sets currently work in the same way. These are industrial targets, marked with little factory symbols on the map once scouted, and infrastructure targets, which right now are a series of unarmed trucks that will be marked on the map when detected. These just appear as the normal orange circles, but you can distinguish these from frontline units as they'll be well within a hexagon, and if you click on them you'll see they only contain unarmed trucks. These industrial factories and trucks, when you destroy them, what they do is lower the number of units that will spawn on the enemy's front line during the next tick, therefore making it easier for your side to push through once again. So although neither of these techniques directly push the front line, what it does mean is in conjunction with your CAS efforts, you can push the front line a lot easier and a lot further than you otherwise would. Another option with strike missions is airfield strikes. It is absolutely a valid tactic on Enigma's Cold War to attack airfields. Here the main target really should be cratering the runway. Attacking spawn areas does certainly seem fun, it makes for good giant explosions, but you will rarely actually get kills as the enemy can simply repair or normally re-slot, and it won't really damage the enemy's attrition at all. However, cratering the runway can make a huge difference because then you stop the enemy being able to use that runway, and if they do insist on continuing to use it, you will start to rack up random enemy deaths as they rip their gears on landing or takeoff and crash. These airfield strikes really follow the same pattern as all of the other strike missions, so I'm including them here. So next then is what kind of plane do you want to bring along for this? Well, again, the good news is there's quite a few options here, but you do have to balance different aspects. Your ideal strike aircraft is something that is very fast, so will spend a minimum amount of time in enemy territory so you don't get intercepted. Something that has the capability of dealing with SAM sites either by avoiding them or destroying them in advance, then carries a lot of munition that ideally it can release all in a single pass. My favourite plane for strike then is the Vigan. It kind of ticks all of these boxes, it can move obscenely fast so you can simply outspeed most enemies, has a load of munition options and you can dump all of them very very quickly so you can take out the site with a single pass, you don't have to loop back around. But equally many other aircraft can fulfil the role. 
on red, the Mirage F1 has similar advantages in speed, and the SU-25 Frogfoot has a huge amount of ordnance with a moderate speed. And I've even had some success doing this on the blue side with a TENS. And of course a Ford can provide a very good supporting role by taking out AA here, using their Shrike capability. It is also worth noting that helicopters can attack these targets. Helicopters mostly have the advantage that they are not going to appear on the enemy EWR, so you can sneak through the enemy territory. Downside of helicopters is they move very, very slowly, but they do have unique special forces options that will let you directly attack these targets. All of that is covered in the helicopter video within the series. And you absolutely can do these attacks with more dedicated fighters, things like the F5. You're just going to get less bang for your buck there. Alright, so that's the basics. Now we're on to how to actually carry out these strike missions. There are many different approaches, but I'll just go through the main points, starting with what you can expect to see on these targets. So if you're going after the logistics trucks, those are absolutely easy. Those are simply unarmed trucks. You can take those out with whatever. There is no defences at all around those. All the other targets are much harder. As I mentioned before, the depots marked with a house on the map. Those are a series of bunkers that are relatively low HP, very easy to take out, but they are defended by SAM sites, radar SAM sites as well as Radar AAA. The industrial targets marked with a little factory symbol on the map. Those are the large sets of factory buildings with large chimney stacks, normally grouped up with about six of them in a single group. These have a huge amount of HP, so require a lot of ordnance dropped on a single target to destroy it. And again, these will be defended by multiple groups of Radar SAM and Radar AAA in the area. And airfield strikes, since I'm covering those here as well, the airfields are going to also be defended by multiple Radar SAM sites and Radar AAA sites in very close coordination with one another, and of course will be a spawn point of enemies taking off. Now, as to how to deal with this, there are two main methods. That is, either taking out the SAMs or trying to go past the SAMs. So, first off then, if you want to, you can try taking out the SAMs as part of an initial strike mission. Here you want to have some kind of standoff capability that can destroy SAM sites. Here, Blue 4 do have a pretty strong advantage in the form of the A-10's Mavericks which can engage SAM sites at the limit of their range and evade them. Since those are fire and forget, they can fire one and then hide while that missile goes in and does its job. And of course the A4 has the radar homing Shrike missiles. These are found the best tactic is to dive in at a steep angle and fire your Shrikes once the SAM site fires on you. That will almost guarantee that the SAM will try and maintain the radar lock on you which will keep lighting up the radar for your Shrike to hit home. Helicopters can also be really good at taking out the SAM sites as they can approach low below the line of sight of the SAMs and drop off troops. Regular infantry troops will take out SAM sites, don't need to worry about the special special forces troops that are an option. This can be very useful for heavily defended sites with a nearby valley or ridge that will make landing easy. As for Red 4, you can particularly target these sites. My best luck so far has been with rockets with the Su-25, but if you've got any other ideas of how to take out these SAMs from range as Red 4, please do let me know. Now, if you have taken down these SAM sites, the rest is really quite straightforward. Simply approach the target and drop the munitions as you ordinarily would. For the depots, a single small or medium bomb seems to take out those individual barracks. You don't need to waste a lot on those. But for the factory buildings, as I mentioned, you do need a lot of ordnance dropped. Have had mixed results depending on exactly what plane, exactly what ordnance, but it seems to 
generally be the case that a single plane's full complement of ordnance dropped on a single factory will normally kill it. So that is between 9 and 12 500 pound bombs from an A-10. I've seen consistently kill a factory. All of the rockets, really no matter which version, but penetrators definitely work well with the Su-25, will take it down. And a full bomb load on a Vigun dropped on a single factory will definitely kill it as well. If you're going for airfields, the general rule here is you're wanting to do as many craters across the runway as possible, ideally in such a pattern that the enemy are going to find it hard to go past it. The most effective ones I've seen are ones that go diagonally across the runway, that way you can't use either side of it and generally stretched along the length of the runway so there isn't a one half of the runway that some planes can take off of. Also worth noting taxiways are very often used for taking off so those need to be cratered as well. You don't need a huge amount of ordnance for each crater, a 500 pound bomb is more than capable of putting in a significant crater that will stop a plane going near it. So that's plan A is destroy the air defence and then go in for your attack run. Plan B, though, is simply go in for your attack run with the air defence remaining. Now this is obviously a lot riskier, but it is something you can pull off and you can do in one go, so it's slightly more time efficient if you're willing to run the risk. Here you need to have some way of dealing with the fact you've got a lot of air defence coming in on you. My general tactics here are to get as low as physically possible, you want to be almost scraping the paint off the bottom of your plane. Ideally, if you've got the terrain to suit it, put some kind of ridge between you and the target for as long as possible. Otherwise, just keeping as low as possible so that the target either can't see you or that any missiles launched are going to have a hard time hitting you without hitting the ground as they try and intercept you. As you get close, try not to stick in a straight line because the radar AAA will open up and if you're going in a straight line, the radar AAA, be it a Vulcan or a Shilka, will hit you. You want to be going in as physically fast as possible, so full burners on whatever kind of aircraft you have, and you just want to be doing one pass. After your ordnance has dropped, do some kind of evasive manoeuvre because again the Shilkas will open up on you and expect immediately to be engaged by SAM sites on your way out. During these attacks, the main thing to keep in mind is you do need to be on watch for those SAM launches. And here the tricky part is trying to avoid those while still closing on the target. Most of the SAM sites on Enigma's Cold War can be evaded with a last minute hard jink, so it is possible to outmaneuver them, but this does require practice. Best bet is try and break line of sight if you can, so again, staying low for as long as possible. And I've had best experience with this in the Vigan, it is both fast and manoeuvrable enough to do this. Certainly seen many people do it in the Mirage, and I've had some luck in the Su-25 with this kind of approach. For slower planes like the A-10, I never attempt this, I always try and take out the SAM sites first and then go on the attack. So that's the basics of how to go after these marked targets as part of a strike mission. This is certainly one area that I've not done a huge amount of, so if you have any of your own tips please do leave them down below. And if there's any questions again leave them down below, I'll answer any quick questions, any larger questions I'll try and make a dedicated video to answer in the future. So I hope this has been useful, if it has please consider leaving a like and or subscribe, really does help the channel. And otherwise, until next time, remember to be kind to yourselves and everyone else. Cheers.